then experimentation. Um, experimentation is also like normally people just see it as A-B testing and they just always go that all the experimentations are A-B testing. Uh, what we want to say it is or what we normally also tell our customers is that we should look at it as this hypothesis driven development. So you have an idea how it could work and then you start uh, working with that. So here in this uh, slide you see that the, it starts from the hypothesis, then you set the goals, test the content, analyze and basically then you go again. So this is not just something you do once, you do this continuously multiple times. And then how we like talk with the client or how we tell them that it's good to think of it because it's normally, you know, you can have the idea of how to do it, but then you always need a bit of help, you know, in the end of what's like the best way to creating it. So creating this kind of sentences of what are the expectations of this, this experiment is really helping. So this is something that one of our, our um, technical project managers wrote uh, and we have been using since that. So basically letting the customer fill in the gaps here. So we believe that creating this feature for these people and will achieve this outcome and we validate this when we see this result. So instead of all of this, you just add your own things. And this already helps then the whole team to realize and, and see what we're really doing with this or trying to achieve with, with doing this hypothesis. I think this really like uh, helps to divert your thinking in exactly. this. Uh, yeah. experimentation-minded uh, development. Yeah, and I, I actually also think that what I have seen how much developers are interested in also uh, like understanding why we are doing these certain things. I think this kind of just showing this kind of like the, the hypothesis over why we are doing this, it also opens the mind to the developer and they understand what they are doing. So they are not just coding the whole day, but like actually understanding what we are doing on the website. Yeah, definitely. The <clears throat> different ways then to, to do this hypothesis uh, driven development is we still of course need the A-B testing or multivariant testing. And I would like to show here the, the like differences between uh, the normal A-B testing and then the multi arm bandit testing. Um, I have noticed that multi-arm bandit uh, testing is not so common yet that I actually thought. We started it, this with one and a half years ago or something. Uh, but what the differences in A-B testing versus the multi-arm bandit way of testing is actually the fact that in A-B testing, you, for example, put it 50-50. So you are, let's say version A is the one that is working better and version B is working really bad. It means that during the whole test, you're just showing the bad version to the other people. So you have a bunch of people who are seeing a bad version. That's not good. That doesn't bring in money. So when you're using multi-arm bandit, um, which is like this algorithm-based um, automated testing, where you're choosing a reward for the algorithm and then you just leave it running, is that as you see here in the picture to the right, there is a differentiation between how much you're showing the different variants. So let's say we're using, for example, this, this algorithm called Epsilon Greedy, which is really greedy as the name says. It can be so that there's from 100 shows, 90 times it's showing the winning version and the 10 times it's just trying to see if it can find a competitor to the winning version. And that this way, you're just always showing 10% the bad version, so to say, and 90% is seeing the better one. So I would say that everyone who's doing A-B testing should at least consider testing this, this multi-arm bandit because this literally just means more money. Yeah. Especially in the in like short term, if you have some campaign yeah. or some like short term uh, like uh, running, running experiments, you really can't afford to lose, lose yeah, the user. Yeah, true, 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 true. Okay, then some other examples for experimentation. So, uh, 
this is what we did for at least one of the clients. Is uh, there as uh, Magento is providing the responsive uh, yeah. web pages out of the box, which is really nice, nice feature. Uh, but in this case, actually, what ended up happening is that the buy bu button uh, was uh, below on the mobile screen, so you couldn't screen it, so you couldn't see it. You had to scroll. Yeah. And with Frostmo, we just wanted to experiment that what if we bring the buy button uh, to the first screen so user, user doesn't have to scroll down would it uh, help the conversion rate yeah there. and I, I can say from the the results on this one actually there was really positive results on this yeah. and uh, we then even took this further because we became interested about the fact how much of the content actually people scroll to. So we put this kind of triggers to so that we could count how far on the page people go. And they really don't go that far. They're like, mo most of the mobile buyers already know what they're coming to buy. So I think that's the, that's the thing why this works so much better on mobile to actually have the buy button there. They're, they're not interested about the product. They have already read about the product before. Yeah. So and the change wasn't that big. So yeah. Exa yeah. Order exactly. Order Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Then the second example is that we uh, what we did is uh, we brought this kind of like you you can save up to uh, x hundred euros or x amount of euros. So when you have a discounted products, you can already see like the normal price and discounted price, but then the differentiation is not visible and it's not easily available for Magento to add. So then uh, the experimentation here is that if you add this uh, save 200 euros uh, batch to the product, does it increase the conversion rate again? And it can be done, done on normal desktop view or in mobile view. And, and you're saying that we're doing the, uh, or like Frosmo is doing the counting of this, like counting the sa amount saved money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, like we just uh, take the original price and the discount price, then we check what's the difference, and then we can display it. Okay, cool. And then the third uh, example is the previewing the cart after user has uh, added a product to the cart. So then you can experiment like what kind of uh, layout uh, would work here. Like when you're adding it, do you want to show some kind of icon that now now one uh, uh, item was added there or do you want to show the whole shopping cart in this kind of like uh, model or pop-up window or somehow like visually showing that one and which of these versions work the best. 